welcome to our quarantined podcast. Um, just something to do to kind of occupy time, stay healthy, stay inside. Um, it's going to be a bunch of random subjects, uh, nothing in particular. We're going to have some guests and uh, just kind of have fun and get other people involved. Um, so just try to enjoy it, relax, and um, see if we can entertain. Uh, this week's subjects will just be sports, more specifically hockey, <laughs> NHL. More. So some of you may not be too into hockey, but for those that are, I uh, hope you enjoy. Um, so my name's Kyle. My name's Aaron. And uh, we're just going to start with something very easy. Aaron, will you please tell us who your favorite team is and why in the NHL? So, let's paint a picture of sports here. Um, my favorite team is, as you can tell by the jersey, the San Jose Sharks. Uh, quick version of this was back when actually Kyle was uh, my roommate in college. The first year he really got me into playing or watching hockey was the year that Pittsburgh played San Jose in the Stanley Cup Finals. And San Jose fully uh, laid down the gauntlet and choked. Um, sad, but have made a couple good returns to the Stanley Cup, or not the Stanley Cup, but at least the playoffs, unlike this year. Um, but yeah, right now they're my favorite team, and hopefully they can pull it together for either the end of this year or show promise for next year. But how about you? The Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> uh, the reason that is, is uh, long story short, um, I received some pajamas and a Crosby jersey when I was about four or five years old. So since then, I just kind of uh, took on to Crosby. And uh, ever since then, um, other players like Mark Andre Fleury, uh, Guinea Malkin. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, just uh, I think in addition to that, growing up in Wisconsin, Milwaukee more in particular, we don't have a team uh, and we have a lot of presence of the Blackhawks, but that only made me dislike them more as opposed to joining that, that whole crowd. So True. Um, that's where I'm at with Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, True. Okay. Over Aaron, though. Following so you, know, you have a Jersey on. I have one as well. Uh, Who is your favorite player and give us a brief description. Why? Oh, well, favorite player would have to be my Jersey would be Joe Thornton in the aspect of him being an all around decent guy, um, really mainly to the glue of the team, other than when Joe Pavelski was on the team. But um, uh, Brett Burns is also a solid second backup. Um, just how he is, how loyal he's been with the team until some events that have happened this season that um, are both not really team related, but also his related, um, sadly. But yeah, it's still a good player. Uh, much respect hopefully he comes back for um, at least one or two more years or one would be awesome and he's able to at least reach another stay in the cup so but it already sounds like you're a Crosby fan so uh do you think that affects <laughs> quick question you think that affects uh, his future relationship <clears throat> with the Sharks you end up doing a Tom Brady where he's like I, I need to prove to you that I well, can I can still he originally came from the Bruins anyways. So uh, I would honestly think at this point at how they shipped, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how they shipped uh, um, Patrick Marlowe out the first time and then they signed him back at the beginning of the year and then how they shipped out Pavelski. Um, you'd really think that they're trying to build for the future. And, but then when this year turned to a turn, didn't do very well. People started getting shipped out, uh, tried to make it so they could go get a ring pretty much or get a chance at the Stanley Cup. Uh, he was very vocal, and I don't blame him as a fan. Um, he's becoming to the end of his career, and he wanted that shot. And it could have been multiple reasons of him having a pretty big deal uh, money-wise, so teams didn't want to take the risk on him. But it's also kind of an organization's, if you're going to ship out a player that you brought back in because they wanted to be become a shark and then you shipped him out to Pittsburgh and Patrick Marlou um, and other various players that had great aspirations as sharks or highlight reels. Um, I don't think he, he would do it as Tom Brady if he 
if he is a free agent, I think I could see him leaving, but I also think it would be hard for him to leave like that. I think he really wanted the scenario of being able to say that he left on mutual respect of the team shipping him out and how he wanted to leave. Um, and I think if I recall too, right in his contract, he had a uh, trade clause for certain teams. I got to look that up. But if that's also the thing, I mean, he could have done his due diligence to waive that, go to a team. Maybe it's not a team that he would have liked to, but at least it's still a shot at the playoffs. Um, now, unfortunately, with the coronavirus and everybody's rally to the end of the season, it'll be very interesting to see if the teams like them can hold momentum or if it's going to be a whole new beginning of the season kind of momentum um, to try to even get it going again. Um, normally, I mean, as you know, two NHL games and seasons are so long that that momentum that they have is just little to none or like great. So like you, I think the Penguins were doing pretty good after the trade for Patrick Marlowe you'd probably say that they started getting some good momentum. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we had a few acquisitions. One also uh, bringing back uh, uh, Connor Sheary, who, I mean, is just a uh, – was our kryptonite when he went over to Buffalo Sabres. But, um, you know, a couple acquisitions. And, yeah, one being your Patrick uh, Marlowe. Um, but uh, – yeah, I mean, you know, um, the Penguins are doing very well. I think the only positive thing about this break is that we actually went on a lose streak at the very end. Mm-hmm. So uh, if any benefit from this and uh, also a team that always seems to be battling injuries, it'd be the Penguins. Um, and with that, I guess I'll answer that question myself as to who my favorite player is. And without a doubt, that's uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's Evgeny Malkin. Uh, just uh, his passion drive, how little um, he needs to say to the media, but at the same time, how much humor he brings to the locker room, uh, how much of a leader he is uh, uh, to his teammates, and just um, overall, I mean, how much he can dominate just alone. He can go around all five players. Definitely. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so Evgeny Malkin, definitely my favorite. At first it was Sidney Crosby, but I've, I've learned to love that that one two punch. It's interesting when Sidney Crosby gets hurt, just seeing Malkin take off and become the leader of that team. He could go to any other team and be the captain. Uh, I'm curious, that. what's your record when they are either on the ice or, and this is probably a thing that you'd have to look up, but uh, that question of what number. Who, is it a big number of a difference on who's on the ice versus when one isn't or one is? Because um, I don't yeah, so think I, I don't think they're on the same line, are they? They are not. Uh, Crosby is center for line one and uh, Malkin is center for line two. Um, obviously, that changes up. So Crosby got hurt. Uh, he had a midsection injury earlier in the season. And, uh, I mean, they were good. Um, and, 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 and given Crosby wasn't the only person injured, many, but the younger guys have stepped up. Uh, it was unbelievable. We, that's our best win streak. So probably – uh, better win streak when Crosby is off, but however, you can't take that into account when it comes down to the playoffs. Uh, Crosby is someone that you want on that ice for as mm-hmm. long as possible. Just like I would say, the linchpin uh, of the grenade for us was Pavelski going to Dallas. I mean, you look at the call that wasn't called or not called, or that was ultimately made called against Vegas. Um, I mean, that once that decided it, I mean, with your glue of your team, so. And, and and that's where the difference is, is he doesn't have to take on that lead role anymore. So even though his production has gone down this season with Dallas, Dallas is in a better position than they were last season. Mm-hmm. And last season, they were a good team. Um, so I guess that's a great transition over to something fun that we want to do uh, that we've been talking about for a while is a full on, if the season ended today and they decided not to play any more games, so when they come back on all of a sudden they just start the playoffs uh which there's many different theories as to what the, the league may do which question uh, this is what would we're going to be for that though because knowing every team is on their own slate they'd have to start the playoffs it's a seven game series would you be okay that with that or would you rather have a couple of games so they can get back into hockey shape and hockey like 
just team mentality. Because honestly, I think if you look at it as in basketball, I think they could pick it up and do right playoffs right then and there. As much as people want that couple games to get back into it, I think it would be easier to get back into basketball shape or even football shape um, if you're able to still kind of mentally prepare for it. But I feel like hockey would be totally different where you need to have that practice and those ice times to get it going. No, and that's a great question, actually. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm midway between the theories, so I'm, I'm like that happy medium. I don't think we have the time or does it make sense for us to continue the season where we were at? Um, now, that might be unfair to teams like, uh, I'd say, Chicago, Arizona, and a couple others that are going in the upward momentum, even though they are kind of far from the stretch. But, I mean, similar to uh, the Blue Jackets last season, I mean, if they continue on that route, the playoffs are a possibility. Mm-hmm. However, it's just, it's just, you know, it's kind of the bolt that most players will have to take the bite. I would say about maybe five games max before the playoffs. Um, otherwise, I mean – yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. I think it's the number one sport that would take a little bit more time uh, just to – just to, I mean, because hockey is just so physical, so brutal. Also, mm-hmm. the team chemistry is just something, especially at the speed that it is uh, in, now in 2020 as it compared to 2015. Um, so, but yeah, I'd say five games max, but we definitely can't uh, start the season as to where we're at. Um so imagine that though, if they did have the whole, you like, normally it's only like one time a year that you have baseball, football and hockey and basketball going on at one time. Do you imagine if we all started back up again and they would all be playing at one time? I mean, that would be sports heaven slash like frenzy of just trying to make up all those games. Um, I, you got to think I me mean, that's prime in April. I mean, that's prime time in general because you have both basketball playoffs and NHL playoffs going on. Yep. Um, so, and, and, and luckily there's about that week difference. Uh, hockey starts, you know, so hockey will be on the second round while basketball is in the first round. So sure. I mean, on uh, nice, but yeah, I mean, then you'll have baseball starting and, um, you know, which will be interesting what they do with that. Uh, what is it, 152 game season. So, um, but yeah, I mean, um, but I guess, you know, what, what we did uh, for this is just make it, easier on us because then we would in addition to that uh I, i'd say we took the teams that are in playoff contention right now because if we were to you know you we'd have to guess what line. team huh i was like you got to draw that line somehow even though the season's not over you got to draw that line like hey i get it the blackhawks are three games back but i mean yeah there's no way for us to you know yeah there's no way for us to to, to predict that so if you don't mind i guess on um, Maybe go uh, first round by first round yep. and so on and so forth. Okay. So if the season did now in the Atlantic division, we would have the Bruins facing the wild card Columbus Blue Jackets. And we had the number two seed Tampa Bay Lightning facing the number three seed Toronto Maple Leafs. So I uh, definitely made my predictions for that first round in the Atlantic, I will definitely take the Bruins over the Columbus Blue Jackets. The reason being is just uh, Columbus upset or upset Tampa Bay last season in the first round, swept them. That was something no one predicted. And I'm sure Columbus is going to have some wins against the Bruins that no one predicted. But the thing is, is the Bruins are so experienced. And I would say the same thing that they faced the Capitals uh, even though the Capitals got upset against the Canes, but that was a seven game series. Mm-hmm. Tell you right if now, I remember though, correctly, it was like a last minute goal too. Like that was an OT goal. Yeah. Full on. As close as you can get. Yeah. Like probably one of the series of, uh, of uh, last season playoffs. Um, but with that, I just think, you know, and the Bruins also have a little chip on their shoulder being that they lost game seven. They were that close um, to, to the blues. Um so then, and then the next round, what I have, uh, or, or the next uh, series I have is Tampa Bay versus Wait, the, the Bruins Leafs lose and, to last year. Did you say? Uh, to St. Louis in the finals. Oh, you're talking about that? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
damn, I'm already, con- I thought it was fucking, uh, the, uh, I'm thinking of the Caps when they were in it. Wrong yeah, year, no, wrong I'm- time. Long time ago, folks. Um, but yeah, who's your first round? You say Bruins. And then your so second I- game. This, and then I have Tampa Bay beating the Leafs simply because I see something in Tampa this season that maybe not a lot of people agree with. Mm-hmm. But Tampa Bay right now, they added, they not only imp- only improved their speed and their shooting, but they also have some bulk uh, in the bottom line. So they have people to defend their stars. And that's so key because last season they didn't do that. They got bullied left and right. Columbus just took advantage of that and that's so key that's happened to the penguins where like i mean speed has won them cups however if your best player is out by injury it doesn't do you any good so um you know with that that's that's simply what i have for tampa bay i think they also have probably the biggest chip on their shoulder if we're going to mention that um so i definitely have tampa bay uh thriving in that now just quickly uh hop over to metro uh, division, which I have the Caps. Uh, that would be the number one seed Caps versus the wild card uh, Hurricanes. So, which would be really interesting because that's a rematch. Mm-hmm. Um, the Canes were more impressive last season than they were this season. I think the Capitals are more impressive this season than they were last season. So, with that being simply said, I think the Capitals take this and they take it fairly easily instead of a seven game series. I think with that um, team, too, next, being young, too, it'll help them. Exactly. Um, you know, and just the consistency that you've seen with the Capitals all season long, just hard out trends where even if they lose a game, they tend to not lose one back-to-back. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, And then uh, the next one I have is uh, the number two Flyers versus uh, the number three Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh this might be a little biased because uh, the Flyers are my least favorite team ever. Um, and that's probably easy to understand. Uh, but I do have Pittsburgh winning this for an interesting reason. And that's only because of the break. I'll tell you right now, if there, if there wasn't a break, if the season didn't stop, that's likely would have still been a matchup based upon how the, the progression was going. And I would have picked the Flyers to win it easily. Hmm. but the Flyers were on that hot streak and the last game that they played if I'm not mistaken was a loss uh to the Capitals it was either Capitals or Bruins but just a heartbreaker and now it the season stopped and it's like you just finally you know you're go, getting hot getting hot playing all these good teams then you play the best team and you lose and you lose an ugly game so I think that's actually going to mentally take a bigger toll than what most people think um so uh, I do have Pittsburgh because I mean they had all this time to heal, and then you're going to get fresh legged Crosby and Malkin, uh, Matt Murray. Um, so I, I'm going to have to pick the Penguins on this. I would, I, if I'm a betting man, I, I would pick the Penguins. Um, I guess before we go over to the West, uh, if you want to do your yeah, so Atlantic and Metro, mine has been pretty much the same. Um, different reasoning behind picking them though. I would definitely go with Bruins Um, with their older team. Didn't really lose much. If I know correctly, don't really follow them. But if I've, from what I know that they pretty much have the same team that they brought back last year, went to the cup last year. So with this break, if they, as being older, I see no reason why they shouldn't be able to make it out of the first round, especially with that experience. And they are older. You're getting rest. They have time to prepare. Um, So easy. I think Columbus will put up a fight. Um, They are a very good team, but I just don't see them blowing them by like the lightning they did last year. Um, As for the second game, I'm actually the opposite. I think as much as the lightning have changed and showing promise, I think the Maple Leafs still go in with a young team. Um, Austin Matthews. um, Yeah. I mean, they got a lot of talent on that roster. And, I mean, again, it goes back to rest. I mean, they got rest going in. They've got a great goalie. I think they can go in and stun the Lightning once again. Um, And then as far as the Metro, pretty straight up. Uh, Caps I have winning and then the Pitt, Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, 
biggest thing I think that rival will fuel them to beat the Flyers and then the Caps want redemption from be losing to the Canes which I think will be really uh pumped to try to get that series going they will pump that hard oh, yeah. um but I don't think the Canes as good as they are really this year I don't know if they really added much or lost much um I just see the Caps coming in especially getting Dylan I'm pretty sure um from the Sharks big big defenseman guy that'll help that team a lot um may let up some team. issues but oh, I'm sorry what I'm sorry to interrupt. I'd say it's probably my favorite trade out of all the trades that have happened. Dylan has been a great defensive threat in size for the Capitals. That mm-hmm. just seemed to, by game one, fluently uh, understand the game of Caps and what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, and he was a good guy next to Burns uh, when he was on the Sharks. So I think that'll be a hard – I mean, you already see with the Sharks. It's a hard person to make up and to try to fill those shoes or skates. Um so yeah, I got Caps and then versus Pitt in the next round, or um, Pitt moving on. Yeah. Um, as okay. far as the West, yeah. then I'll lead it off. Then for the West, uh, it would be St. Louis versus Calgary Flames, Abs versus Dallas, and then in Pacific you got the Vegas and number one in the Preds as a wild card, and then Edmonton Oilers as number two, and uh, Vancouver Chinooks in three. Um, very interesting bracket because I think the Van- Vancouver is finally back in the uh, playoffs and so is Edmonton um, having their out against the Sharks uh, their year that they got um, Connor McDavid so that'll be good for him experience wise um, nothing real flashy on that team but good good core group of guys and it could be an interesting matchup uh, both of them are flying under the radar if they would make it in I don't think a lot of people would expect them to do good this year um, especially how Vancouver did last year. Um, so I don't know if you want to list your games off then who you got first. Where do you want me to go? Uh, did you select your winners? Do you, do you want to do that? No. So for the central, it, uh, the rematch again would be blues versus flames. Um, as much magic as I think the blues have in the momentum of winning the cup, the flames were just too good last year and got, the short end of the stick, I think. And I think they won't do that again with the rest coming in with the same core guys, um, adding some people. I'm pretty sure they acquired some, I think they acquired some people with the sharks and just other people around the league. I see them upsetting the blues in the uh, first round of the central. Um, as far as the second game, it's abs versus Dallas. And as much as I love Joe Pavelski, I, the abs, same thing as them last year. They, they had a really good season going into the playoffs. Um, and I think they just got the short end of the stick in, in the playoffs. Um, so I have the abs and the flames moving on uh, for the Pacific. Um, Vegas versus Preds. I mean, as head scratching of a move it, it is for hiring the, the Sharks old coach for the Vegas Golden Knights as much as I, I disagree with some of the things he did get us to a Stanley cup playoff and with the Vegas Knights roster, I mean, you're pretty much getting handed a cake and saying, here, go make it to the playoffs. So and against the Preds, I think losing, um, uh, Oh, help me out with his name. Um, that used to be on the predators. He was on the cover for NHL, um, uh, dating uh, who Subban. Yes. I think them losing him, I think he was a more pivotal player than I think people want to give him credit for um, as a core guy. Now, not saying that team's not still good without him. I just see Vegas going through them. Uh, Unless uh, Peter DeVore brings his woes to the Vegas Knights, which I'd be all happy with because they're technically rivals right now. Uh, I see them. I see them advancing. And then as far as the Edmonton Vancouver game, I see that as a toss up but I do have Edmonton winning over Vancouver, a good uh, Canadian battle uh, just because of Edmonton's had re- more recent playoff history um, in veteran wise. Uh, I see them moving forward and it's a good rebuild year. I mean, you get to the playoffs, that's so a good pat on the back for Vancouver and they still got a lot of players, a lot of draft picks that they can come up next year with. So, all right. No, you. I like that. I like that flames pick over St. Louis. 
Um, but I got to be honest, uh, I think St. Louis is still probably in the top four of teams right now um, with that experience. Um, it's very hard to win back to back, but um, I think the Flames have only taken a step back, even with the new acquisitions, instead of going forward. Um, the next I have the Colorado Avalanche over Dallas. Now, even though Dallas has Pavelski, um, they've only gotten better. And I think that might be personally, I think one of those two teams could easily make it to the finals. I think it's going to be probably uh, another Canes uh, Caps matchup in the first round where you are going to, this is going to be a game seven. However, I'm going to take the abs because they got the speed. They have more of a depth and I like their goalie just a little bit better. And because of that, um, I'm going to go with uh, the Colorado avalanche over Dallas in uh, the Pacific. Uh, pretty easy for me. I got Vegas over the Predators. The Vegas, to me, they can either play like the best team in the league or they can play like the worst team in the league. But that's all they need to win four out of seven games against the Predators, who again have taken a step back. I mean, talk about an intense series that they had the first round last season. I think that that um, that they're you know from being a uh, Stanley Cup final team to only progressing down. I think they're going down as opposed to going up. And then last, uh, Edmonton versus Vancouver, probably another difficult and also going to be a very close series. I like Vancouver's speed and ability to score. I love it. It's really? uh, it, fan base is absolutely crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to have to give it to Edmonton um, just because you talk about a team that knows how to score they had the fastest player. I don't even need to say his name. And, uh, but they also have – guys, I think they have something similar to the Tampa Bay Lightning where if you go after our star now, we have players to defend him and players that will hurt your players. And I think that's a big deal. So now Connor McDavid can go about – and he's not the only scorer on that team, but he can go about his game the best way he can. And I have to be worried about a dirty hit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's significant. That allows them to play better than, than they usually do. Um, so I guess, yeah, that transitions us to the second round. Mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, we'll transition back to the Eastern Conference then. Um, I can go ahead and start if you'd like. Yep. Yeah, that's fine with me. So it's probably difficult for you guys to keep track of this. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll we'll just try to add a bracket in the post. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We'll get there someday. Uh, budgeting, budgeting issues. Uh, <laughs> um, so I had uh, for the Atlantic, I had the Bruins beating Columbus, and then I had Tampa Bay beating the Leafs. So by default, that puts Bruins at Tampa Bay, and that's probably the most badass series I think we'll see. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, even with that, uh, they talk about two teams with probably the biggest chip on their shoulder. Um, based upon how last season went in the playoffs for them. I got Tampa Bay in this. I think that uh, the Bruins have a system down to have the most points. They're going to win the President's Trophy. But what happens to President's Trophy winning teams? They lose. They lose, and unfortunately, they're going to play with that biggest chip on the shoulder. But, I mean, even when you go down to Zidane Chara, like just watching him move, and, and no offense to you, Joe Thornton, but I mean, he's kind of moving like Joe, Thor Joe Thornton. He's just not, they're not, despite his size and how dominant he is, I mean, you're starting to see him fight a lot more, but he's definitely not stopping a lot of goals. And I think that's going to be the significant difference is Tampa Bay is just going to overwhelm them, similar to what we've seen already during the, the regular season. So that's my bold pick there. Definitely, definitely. Um, took me a while to choose that one, but I got Tampa Bay winning that one. And then next we'll have uh, Pittsburgh versus Capitals. Oh man, we've seen this before only like 20 million times. <laughs> um, unfortunately it hurts my heart and soul, but the Capitals just have a better system right now. I think the Penguins have acquired too many people, whereas the Caps kept it simple with Dylan just got what they needed. They weren't trying to fix any problems. They were just trying to improve. 
and with that, I think with the consistency of the Capitals, um, I mean, unless the Penguins are red hot, which you just don't know, I could easily be wrong on this. When, when the Penguins are red hot, they're probably the best team in the league. They got to be red hot. Who knows what happens after this? Uh, as of right now, I'm going to take the Capitals over the Penguins, especially with home field advantage. Uh, so that'll complete my, uh, my second round. I respect that. I, uh, I gotta make a compelling argument. Um, the, uh, Bruins for the first matchup, I had Bruins versus Maple Leafs. If I filled out my bracket correctly, uh, it would be Maple Leafs at Bruins. Um, and I just like your lightning pick Bruins. I honestly think as old as they are and slow skating, they might be, I still think, uh, they're going to build a plan around, that in making sure that they play solid defense and keep the Maple Leafs speed to a minimum or at least block the shots that they do get off. Um, now that's not saying that speed can always hurt someone. So who knows if that would actually come true, but I do think in net, uh, Tucker Rask is a solid goalie. Um, even with m- the Maple Leafs goalie as well. Um, it's just tried and true. He's had much more experience. Um, blocking shots um and then again we both had caps versus pit and originally right now i had it written down as the caps but you know what the more i hear it and the more i'm thinking about it right now i think i'm gonna have to go with pit in the sense that they're getting an essential month and a half to rest um they've gotten players through the or through the um trading deadline which to your point, yeah, that it could have almost got too many people in house, but you got to think of now how many conference calls they're on with those people showing them tape, showing them all this other stuff for them to get good and learn their system. And I think with the head coach that Pittsburgh's got in building, um, I think that'll only help them. Uh, as far as chemistry on the ice, we have no idea until they actually are on the ice. Uh, but I think they're, they're not, they're not to the point where they're almost so old, like as Eric Carlson, who has battled many injuries, where it is, if you've seen him in his prime to now, you physically can tell that something is still up. Something in, in-house is just not getting leaked. So, and I don't see that with the Penguins, as old as they are, that team has been, they still have uh, Crosby, they still have Malkin, they still got Haglin, or not Haglin, um, Hornquest, correct, I think. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, those three alone and then getting Marlow, um, who is a solid li- third line or even I don't see him playing two line, but a solid line person that'll help their young guys uh, get to the places that they need to be in um, and make it a classic Caps Pittsburgh showdown. Um, but I see Pitt coming out of it. So then transition to the West for the second round. Um, a recap, I, it was uh, Flames versus Blues. I had Flames moving on. And then recap, I had Abs beating Dallas. So uh, if it was correctly done, it would be Flames versus Abs. Um, yep. yep. Uh, in, uh, you know, it's hard to predict these, but these are two young teams that have it. Um, and I'm going off a lot of knowledge of watching them obliterate the sharks i'm gonna go with uh the abs though coming up with the um underdog playing um i think the flames it'll come back to bite them where they try to play almost too fast where their style of hockey gets sloppy in the playoffs and in a seven game series people figure it out real quick on how to block uh passes um so i got the abs moving on and then for my recap of the pacific i had vegas versus edmonton and that's coming down to not really coaching because you have Pete DeVore's self-destruct some of the times in his playoff appearances, but that team, that roster for Vegas up and down on paper with Mark Andre Fleury and net, who is still very good as even talking about our points on how old people are. He is still playing lights out. And if that Vegas team does just a little bit, just enough in front of him, he, he can have stellar games still. <clears throat> and I don't see, um, I see Vegas pushing Edmonton around a lot. So, uh, I have Vegas moving on. So it would be abs versus Vegas for mine. So, okay. 
All righty. So then I guess we'll move our way back to the east. No, who who would be your uh, well, yeah. your west? Sorry. All guys. Um, so yeah, the second round. Yeah, um, I have St. Louis Blues. Uh, that they, they won and moving on against uh, Colorado Avalanche. And this one again, second closest to probably the most badass series. But um, man, this one was tough uh, because I just still see like the best team uh, from St. Louis, uh, top and bottom. But based upon energy and just how difficult it is to repeat, I have the Avalanche moving on. I'm going to say that's a seven-game series. It could go either way. Um, I would just say 51% chance uh, for the Avalanche just because they, they have that depth that is so important in the playoffs. Um, now, that could change with the break. I mean, maybe the depth doesn't even matter. But as of right now, I think uh, uh, just uh, – a team that might surprise some people is Colorado. Uh, the next round, uh, Vegas versus Edmonton as well. I have uh, simply put, just because Vegas to me, they, they're just not consistent enough for me this season. They're just not consistent enough. They can be a terrible team or they can be a great team. And because of that, I like the recipe again that Edmonton has with speed and size, um, especially because you're going to need that in the West. Um, I got them beating Vegas, and I don't think that'll – I think that'll probably be a four-game, maybe five-game series. Wow. I mean, that's an interesting uh, upset, definitely. Um, but one that could be foreseen because of their troubles that they have. I mean – it's hard to predict, but at the same time, if you're looking at a team that has played consistently well throughout the season, um, Edmonton is that. Um, yeah. So with that being said, I had the abs, um, taking on Edmonton, uh, in the, uh, Western conference final. Nice. Uh, do you want to just stick to the West? Might as well see who goes to the Stanley cup finals then. Sure. Um, I'll go, uh, Avalanche, and maybe I'm a little biased because I'm living in Aspen right now, but uh, it'll be an exciting time once hockey comes back on. Um, I'll definitely be cheering for the Avs, hoping they do well. Um, but uh, I think just the youth and inexperience that uh, comes along with the Edmonton Oilers will end up hurting them, even though they have a great recipe. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Avalanche uh, taking the West. Nice. I, um, I actually had Vegas going on with uh, Vegas versus uh, Abs. Um, and I just think that experience in the playoffs, that I'm making it to a Stanley Cup run, no matter how bad or how uh, uh, inconsistent they may have been during the season, I think them – having that experience of being in a Stanley cup and knowing how, what it takes to get there. Um, and a lot of veteran guys still on that roster, even though they moved on with some of them. Um, I just see them beating the abs, uh, in a very close, very physical, um, good old NHL game. So I'd have Vegas golden Knights going back to their second Stanley cup in their third year of being an expansion team. If I remember correctly, or is this year four already? One impressive resume. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With uh, no further ado, then uh, East. I'm actually very curious as to what you got going on with the Penguins. Yeah, I mean, so I have it going Bruins versus Penguins right now. Um, which I mean, if you like the Caps versus Penguins series, you're gonna fucking love the enjoyment of the uh, Bruins Pittsburgh rivalry that they've had or hatred. Uh, to put it nicely. Um, and I, this is where I think uh, the Bruins making it back to Stanley Cup last year, um, still having an old roster, but they are having very shining moments from their young roster, which I think is a fault that Pitt has. I think they're trying to bring in a lot of people to win now when the group that they have, um, and you really, you've only seen a couple people really show up in that new class of team uh, that can be relied on during the playoffs and being in the playoffs. I mean, you got to have 
your whole team step up. It's not just your superstars anymore. So I do have the Bruins beating Penguins um, in in that final uh, to be a Bruins Vegas uh, Stanley Cup final uh, for 2020. Okay. Um, so mine's Tampa Bay versus the Capitals. I think it'll be a clash of totally two different play styles. Um, two teams with a lot of playoff experience. Um, but I think the Caps are just going to be one step too short this season. I think that they still have a lot of chances, just like the Penguins, just like a lot of other teams. You know, just because they lose this season doesn't mean, you know, these guys are all of a sudden going to retire. Right. Uh, still got a few years left, definitely in their prime. But Tampa Bay is going to take it. I think Tampa Bay is just, again, going to be that uh, – basically that Trojan horse coming into the playoffs where people are going to sleep on them and they're going to be sorry for it. Um, and uh, I, I, I just think with the depth, the speed, and now the size to protect. So again, it's almost similar with Edmonton. I just like their experience. Um, so uh, I do have um, Tampa Bay going on for the East. So I have Tampa Bay versus the Colorado Avalanche. Which to it, not, not to interrupt, but, Two to point out, that would be a ridiculous final. Just in general, just having that the Lightning being absolutely snuffed and beaten down the last couple of years where everyone just, you have a season to fucking remember, but then end up having something go wrong in the playoffs that cause you to lose to finally be able to at least get to the playoff and to the Stanley Cup, I think would be a, quite an achievement. Um in, in your opinion of your bracket, I think if they would make it to there, I think they would have the most chip on their shoulder and who beat the abs to finally clench the cup. Um, I would have to agree though. I think the, um, the abs would be an underdog and win that series to voice my opinion on your bracket. Um, for mine, it would be, unless you had anything else to add on yours. No, just curious okay. to hear your turnout. Who's, who's going to win it all Aaron? So uh, in my bracket, I had Bruins versus Vegas. And as much as it pains me to see Zidane Acharo raise up another thing, um, I just see the Vegas, th this would probably be where their inconsistency would come to bite them in their ass. I think Peter DeVore would be stubborn, just like the year that he was in the playoff or the Stanley Cup with the Sharks. I think that what they would ride to get there would be their downfall. Um, and I see the Bruins head coach being much more rope willing to change and set up a game plan to beat Vegas. Um, so I would see the Bruins being uh, the NHL championships, hoisting the Stanley cup at the end of the year, which could be hopefully very soon yet very far away, probably. <laughs> um, Let's hope this. Yeah. But as far as your bracket, then too, I think, even if you got to think if it's the Lightning Bruins, uh, that that secondary matchup, I mean, that could decide who would win the cup that year because of how good they are both playing in the playoffs. And I think it would determine it, it, the other biggest question mark about all of these teams, no matter who you'd pick or who your favorites are. The biggest thing is, are they going to get games to prep beforehand or is it going to be full on? Here's the brackets and here you go. Let's go in a week. Um, because you got to think that the young players are going to be, be able to jump to a good start and get that right out of the gate, be able to go and get some goals and get some games, which then could be detrimental with almost upsetting the cat. Like if you look to the caps and canes game um, or matchup, if they would start in the beginning, I think the canes might be able to pull an upset because they're young and they would be able to go out on the ice and go and get it done and win those first two games on the road um, that they would have to win. And that goes for any young team, if they would be able to take that advantage um, compared to an old team uh, that may have the system and the skills all set, but just are sleepy because they have to knock the rust off of them. So very yeah, good outcomes. Yeah, I mean, the, the number one thing I'll admit is that I'm more excited for this playoffs than I was last playoffs. Now, last playoffs didn't disappoint, but I'm just saying I, I, uh, I'm genuinely excited for these teams. There are a lot of familiar faces, some unfamiliar, but just some good matchups down the mm -hmm. line. I think every round will be very entertaining. Uh, and I guess without, without further ado, I got Tampa Bay and Avalanche at the very end. 
I'll tell you what, right now I'll be cheering for the Avalanche, but I got Tampa Bay winning it all. And I'll tell you what, I may regret this because last season I had Tampa Bay. <laughs> this gets swept. So hopefully I don't get burned for this. Don't disappoint. I, um, I won't be too upset if you guys won it all. Um, just don't let it be Philly or uh, Boston. True. And I think they would be able to finally get that chip off their shoulder too of the revenge game against the Caps uh, in the earlier parts of the bracket and then to come out and actually get to the cup and uh, finally wipe that slate clean and finally be able to hoist it. I think that could be a dangerous setup for a good dynasty then in later years. Now, granted, it is a hell of a lot harder to make it back to back to back Stanley Cups um, than it is in NFL or baseball. Well, baseball is almost the same, but basketball is if you can finally get a winning recipe in the playoffs to the lightning and then have that winning recipe of in the season, look out record books. They could be going for it. Yeah. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. And I mean, it, and I'll add that to that, that uh, a short-term memory team. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing. That's, that's what's going to win the, uh, the Stanley Cup, just um, not letting things beat you up mentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess I'll, uh, you know, we could, we could definitely wrap this up. I got a couple things to add. I got one more, too, with the question of the day that I'm going to ask you at the end of your two. Um, so if, what are your other two things that you wanted to ask? Um, well, actually, uh, a couple fun things. One, if I can get Allie's attention. Can I have you for a second? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to have my girlfriend come over here. She is wearing uh, my second favorite player's jersey. Dustin Bufflin. You won't be able to pronounce that last name. Um, I just want to say as a nice little ha-ha, the Jets would be in the playoffs if it weren't for Dustin Bufflin getting hurt and being out for the remainder of the season. Uh, and they would have been a threat to many, many teams. Also, Ali, I know this is all chicken scratch, but these are all the teams in the playoffs. I just want you to pick one out. And it, even if you don't understand, so we have Boston, Columbus, Ohio, Tampa Bay, Toronto, and then, uh, uh, Washington Capitals, uh, the Hurricanes, Carolina Hurricanes, Philadelphia Flyers, Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, St. Louis Blues, Calgary, Colorado Avalanche, uh, Dallas Stars, Vegas, yep. um, the Predators, Edmonton, and Canucks. Just pick one. Who do you think is going to win it all? Win it all? All right. I've got $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> I got a thousand dollars on the Canucks. Wow, I wow. actually like that because that is the one team that we we really don't know how it's going to spit into the playoffs. So we really don't. So that would be interesting. That I would be a ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> She's joking about the thousand that we don't have. Oh well, yeah. Uh, which is which is okay. I think a lot of people are struggling right now to have even a thousand, which is uh, perfectly fine. But I honestly, if Vancouver would go on a run like St. Louis. That could be a I'm sorry. What the thousand from Trump is what we'll we'll, we'll throw down. But uh, but go yeah. ahead. Did you ask? Well, no. I was just saying that like the, if Vancouver would be able to go on that run, uh, St. Louis did. I mean, I, personally, I've never really watched the Vancouver uh, Chinooks. Um, I just really like their fans. They kind of remind me of the Bills. Uh, same with Vancouver. Um, I mean, or I'm say I'm uh, Winnipeg. Um, so that's kind of why I kind of got into. The coolest thing, too, is if we, I mean, right off the bat, you have a Canadian uh, rivalry. Well, not a rivalry, but a Canadian showdown. And then if you really think about it, if both teams do very well, either one of them, you could have a Canadian Stanley Cup final, which would be, that hasn't happened in how many years, would be off the rails for Canadians and their fans. But let's keep it in America. (laughs) So... Um, final note, I don't know if you got anything to add. I'll just end it with this. Uh, people feel free to, to donate as well. Um, Aaron, with every podcast that we do, I'll throw in an extra dollar if you cut your hair. So right now we're at $1. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, we'll have to keep that in mind and, uh, I'll open up a, uh, <laughs> a, uh, GoFundMe page for that, but, um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 
But thank you for watching. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Leave a comment and suggestions below. I know David Beltran's going to leave one. Um, so uh, <laughs> see you guys later. Thanks, guys.